In the name of the divine, most compassionate, most kind. Greetings of love and peace to you, O oh beloved ones. This is Chico here, and today we are going to go deep into the mystery and the reality of the who, which is the true reality in me, in them, in everything, including you. The who just means that which is, the nameless and the faceless. The all is beyond mind and logic, beyond description and beyond prescription. It belongs to no one, but everything belongs to it. Today we will talk about the nature of who we are and what we are, and also what we're not. We will go into the old age question of who am I? Into self-inquiry to ask about the nature of our origin and tackle those long-held beliefs we held through miseducation, dogma and indoctrination. Because what and who you are is beyond this world of illusion, delusion and confusion. It all starts in our childhood when we have been handed down a belief system which in most cases is accepted and passed down from generation to generation without ever having experienced the reality of what we have been taught. In other words, as well-meaning as all the great scriptures of this world are, they are nothing more than a menu. But the great masters who graced this earth from time immemorial all came here to say that we have left you a menu we want you to taste the food. Yes, the menu might delight your heart, but it will not satisfy the hunger and the thirst your soul is longing for. Furthermore, the world we live in is geared towards the outside, not the inside. It is that which we call the bird in the cage syndrome. The world has made us believe that we must decorate the cage called body, but we forgot to feed the bird called soul. The very things that are supposed to free us have enslaved us, not to mention the ruling institutes that lied to us politically, raped us spiritually, dumbed us mentally and poisoned us physically. But there is one thing that no one can take away from you. Something so beyond the reach of man's hands that it cannot be killed by bullets, not cut by knives, nor drowned by water, nor burned by fire, nor buried by earth. This is your soul essence, which is part of the all is. It is ever ready, ever steady, ever present and ever here, ever near, ever beautiful. It is contentment and ever peaceful. It is love personified. If you examine the world, you will see that nobody is really happy other than a child or an enlightened being, also known as a saint, for they are a child of the present moment because they killed their ego in the crossfire of love and embodied a childlike innocence with no judgment. So how do we reclaim this wonderful treasure that is lying inside all of us? The truth is we are all enlightened in an aware state. We are like fishes swimming in an ocean asking where the water is. You are that which you seek. Because what you're seeking is already seeking you. As the great Rumi said, all along I have been knocking from the inside. And inside is where the who hides and where the who resides. It is the mystery that is hidden in you and me. It is the unity in multiplicity and multiplicity in unity. It is the beginning and the end, the hidden and the manifest. So this brings us to the nature of the all is. And to do this, we must go back to basics. To know that you are not who you think you are. You are nothing more than stored up memory in the library of your thoughts. A person is the index of his mind and will act accordingly. 
the good for the good and the bad for the bad. But all your thoughts are nothing more than added software. Just like a computer or an iPhone. They all look the same, however, we must personalize them. And to do that, we must upload our software to them. We upload our photos and videos and contact numbers by pressing file and save. The password is ego, which stands for easing God out. Or easing good out. Or what I term as just energy going off. So the person knows their phone by their unique password and software they uploaded. But how about if the hard drive gets corrupted? That phone or computer looks exactly the same, but it is the content that personalizes it. So this is the story of the humans. Like a doctor who has two children and a wife. He gets into a car and gets into an accident and ends up in a coma. Three months later, he wakes up and looks at his family and doesn't recognize any of them. He looks the same. He walks, eats, drinks, and even talks. But the memory hard drive was wiped clean. So we're not who we think we are. Our software is what we are taught by our parents first i.e. their traditions and belief systems. Because a child at two would just about respond to its name. It doesn't know its color, creed, sex or gender. It is the child of the present moment. If you give it an apple, it never questions why you are giving them an apple or the color of the apple or where did the apple come from. They just grab it and eat it. If someone offers them a piece of chocolate, they will drop the banana and eat the chocolate. Why? Because they are a mirror mind and they hold on to nothing, no thing. So they are always in the now. Hence why a child can cry at the top of their lungs one minute, but two minutes later they are laughing like a hyena. The next stage for the child is when they go to play school or kindergarten. This is when they start to learn how to be autonomous and independent. So they pick up certain traits and start adding that software to who they think they are. Eventually they will end up in primary school filled with their parents' fears and belief systems. Then the child goes to secondary school and by now the outside world would have influenced them so much, especially with social media, that they are fully indoctrinated into the system. By the time a child reaches 16, they would have filled about 80 or 90% of their library. So now they press save and call this the story of me with a history. What is missing here is the fact that the person can spend the rest of their lives thinking themselves to be the software they accumulated through their life. Where the truth is they have forgotten that they are a universal child and in order to reconnect with that sound and vibration we must do a total rewind and remember that which we were which is a spiritual being having a human experience not a human being having a spiritual experience so in this session we are going to attempt to unravel the mystery behind the story by the way, and just to clarify, that, that which we are speaking about can only be pointed to and cannot be taught, as it is beyond the sphere of mind, therefore beyond logic and reason, for reason can only take you to a certain level of understanding of this reality, as they both have their limits. As the great master once said, those who speak don't know and the ones who know don't speak. So we are only speaking for the sake of pointing only. Because there is no prescription here, only a description of what is. And through the question, who am I? We can somehow unravel this mystery, which is to unknot the mind and release this contracted energy called the person into boundlessness, which is to die before you die. 
from this dream state we call the world into another reality called the Who sound. For as long as there is an identity, there is an I entity. And if there is an I entity, there is a me. And if there is a me, there is a you. And if there is a you, there is a them. And if there is a them, there is a division. Division creates duality, which is two. And that creates the problems between the you and the me. And this is where we get people dying or killing for a belief system, thinking that they are different to one another. Where in essence we are just all one. As the great Bob Marley would sing, One love, one heart, let's get together and feel alright. So, when you know your true nature, you cannot see yourself as different to others because you only see oneness. You are in the ocean of oneness and oneness does not accept two-ness. So welcome to the Matrix because we are all playing a part in this celestial movie called Life. Once this is recognized, you will know that we are beyond the world of duality. We are the ones we've been waiting for because you are the very mirror of this mystery. This is the story of the lover and the beloved. But this which is longed for can never be gotten. It is like trying to catch air with a butterfly catcher. However, when this illusion is seen through, we find the beauty beyond beauty and a home beyond the concept of home. It has always been here. It has never left us. It is continuously knocking, but we close the door. It is continuously whispering, but we don't listen. It is continuously inviting you and longing for you, but we never heed the message. You have an open invitation to this unfathomable, invisible, indivisible whole that holds and sustains everything and everyone. This is the nothing, no thing, and no thing being everything. Everything belongs to it, but it does not belong to anything or anyone. Yet when the drop called ego, or the me, disappears into the ocean of oneness, it says, I am unconditional love, for I have never been a drop. I have always been part of the ocean. I am a part of the whole. So welcome to you, and welcome to the who. I would like you to relax and just find your happy place. We will be stripping away all that we know and believe. Just like an onion, we will be taking off layer after layer until there is no more layers and no more onion. Just empty fullness and full emptiness. A sky-like awareness that contains all. Please sit back and just feel a presence. Go to your heart and just feel that presence. I am. That intuitive presence that knows it exists, but not as a something or someone. Just simply, I am. As Maulana said, say I am nothing, for as long as we are something, we are incomplete. So don't storify and don't ask why. Just allow. Allow this presence to manifest fully. Thoughts will arise in your mind, but don't worry about your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are the observer of your thoughts. So just sit back and let whatever is arising in your mind arise. You have nothing to do with any story before or after. Because you are more ancient than any story. You are part of the mystery. So let's begin with your name. You are not your name. So let's throw your name away. Just imagine grabbing the name attached to you and throwing it away into space. 
And as you see it fly, it just disappears into the void. Can you feel how light you feel already? That's the first layer. The name has just gone. Now we will go into your belief system. Whether you believe in a higher power or not, it is still a belief system. So let's go there and try to throw them all away. Whether you are a Muslim, Christian or a Jew, Buddhist, Sikh or a Hindu, agnostic, atheist or Shinto, Red Indian, Taoist or Voodoo, spiritualist, pagan, Zoroastrian or whatever belief system you think you belong to. We're going to throw all these titles away. Observe that title and just throw it into space and watch it dissolve into the nothingness. Now grab your job title. Whatever you do for a living, including being unemployed, visualize it and just grab it. Now throw it into the void. Throw it and watch it disappear, never to return. All the thoughts that you have stored in the library of your mind, throw them away because they don't belong to you. Every fear, anxiety, and depression, lack, want and attachment, desires, hate and jealousy, enmity and envy. I want you to put them all in a bag and throw them away into the void. Watch them as they disappear into the nothingness, for they are no longer part of your thoughts or your psyche. They are gone. Feel yourself becoming lighter and lighter. You feel so light right now that the only things you have left is this cage called body. Now grab your body from head to toe. See it as a mannequin doll. Observe it and throw it away. Because this is not you either. What are you left with? You are now left with nothing but an energy body shining beautifully illuminating the whole world. Admire it and enjoy its splendor. But even this is not you. Now we're going to go even deeper. I want you to now grab this illuminous energy body and throw that away. As you throw it away, see it shine bright. And like fireworks, it just sizzles out as it gets swallowed by the spaceless void. Stay there. Where are you now? Now that you have no name, no title, no belief system, no job title, no thoughts, no body, not even a subtle body, then who are you? You are space itself. Just stay there. Don't move. There is this unfathomable space. Can we get to it by any mode of transport? No. Can we reach it by car? No. Can we reach it by a plane? No. Can we say it is north? No. Can we say it is south? No. Can we say it is east? No. Can we say it is east? No. Can we say it is west? No. Is it above? Is it below? No. Does it have any qualities? No. Does it have a color? No. 
Does it have a taste? No. Does it have a point of reference? No. Are you different from this space? No. You are space. You are this awareness that everything springs from. Now that you know you are this sky-like awareness, just stay there. Stay as that. Be that at all times. Now that you know that you are neither the body nor the ego nor the mind. You are neither the title, neither the conditioning nor a belief system. You are part of the ocean. The mere appearances in it can come and go, but you are the unchanging reality that cannot be touched. Stay there and just be the ocean. The appearances like the waves, the foam and the bubbles only appear because of the wind of desire has made them appear. But once the winds of desire and detachment fade, everything goes back into the sea, into the ocean of oneness. Now where is the wave or the foam or bubble? It is all an illusion. Similarly, everything you have thrown away is not you. It is also an appearance. You have to but recognize this. It is all illusion, delusion. Now you can see that you encompass everything and preside over the entire universe. Bask in this glory and bathe in this bliss. Marinate in this contentment and be here and now as the eternal observer. Watching the dissolution of the entire universe, but you remained untouched. This is love. This is bliss. This is joy. This is contentment. This is your true nature, which is unconditional love. Let the sweetest merger take place in the cup of your heart, like ice in warm water slowly disappearing until you become all water. Now just take this moment to be immersed in your own bliss and silence. This is the moment you get to hang with yourself. In yourself, by yourself, for yourself. Just be. From beginning to end, just be. Please take a moment or two to just be. And if any phenomena arises in your mind, just come back to you, to that silent space, to that placeless place. Enjoy yourself. You are going to slowly become aware of your own surroundings and whenever you are ready, you may open your eyes. Keep doing this exercise daily until you no longer exist and your true nature becomes unveiled. Please share your experiences with us at Who Breath so we can bask in your glory and partake in your joy. May love, 
health, joy and laughter follow you wherever you go. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your company. And we just want to say, we love you. And may the who be with you. Welcome to you.